you welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and uh, we left off before we went to the uh, weather report there on the story that um, uh, one a Nigerian, a young Nigerian, has uh, uh, invented a way in which cars or vehicles can can run on electricity rather than on fuel. And we're hoping that he's going to get a patent for that so that uh, he will beat his chest and say, I was the one who did this. Okay. But we also have a very gladdening story. I don't know if that's gladdening, gladdening a story from Kwara State which says that the government has uh, graciously said that the workers should go to work only three days in uh, a week. So because of the fuel subsidy removal that has brought untold hardship to Nigerians, so workers are supposed to go three days to work instead of the normal five days. And I'm just wondering, will this also be uh, something that the private sector will do? Because if the private sector is looking for profit, they, they're looking for how they can make money, uh, they wouldn't want to uh, make their people come only th three days in a week. Are there grants that will be given to the private sector so that they can employ more people? Are they are there tax rebates or something that will be given to the private sector so that they can free up some money to employ more people so that the work that one person should do for five days, maybe they will have two people or more doing that work so that they can uh, take turns in coming to work. Because if that is not done, this is like in times of hardship, we select those who belong to us and give them some, uh, some kind of rest, some kind of... Uh, uh, palliatives and all that. So who doesn't belong to the government in this case? That's the question uh, we'll be asking ourselves. So if the people who are employed by the government will go three days to work, what about the people who are employed by the, uh, uh, the private sector? So are they not belonging to the government as well? Are they not Nigerians as well? So what will be done? Whatever should be done to make sure that the people find some kind of solace, some kind of palliative, it should be done in such a way that everybody will enjoy it. If you're giving scholarship to people because their parents cannot go to uh, work and uh, still pay school fee, it should be for everybody, not for just uh, the people who are working under the government's employ. So that we will stop this thinking that if you're not employed by the government, then you don't have a job, even though uh, your own job is paying you more than what a civil servant might be earning. Well, uh, we'll take uh, we'll, we'll go back now to where we should be at this moment, and that is of the press. We're going to be looking at the, the dailies uh, this morning and what are the headlines on the dailies. We'll begin with the Punch newspaper to find out what the Punch is saying. Punch newspaper this morning leads with the headline subsidy. NLC kicks as court stop strike police warns hoodlums. The writers there are Labor Falls interim order, bank, aviation wonders, uh, or workers rather, bank, aviation workers joint plan strike, IG orders police commissioners to prevent breakdown of law and order. Still on subsidy, one billionaire petrol uh, order smuggled goods seized in May. Still in, on petrol, rather, not subsidy. And we have smaller headlines there. Uh, Tinubu will turn the economy around, according to Jimo Ibrahim. That is on page 7. Unilag undergraduate shot dead over stolen phone. You find that on page 4. Federal government records 930 billionaire two-month fiscal deficits. That's according to the CBN. Other ed headlines are above the major headlines there. Uh, presidential election, Atiku witnesses alleged poll fraud. You will find that story on um, page 20. Foreign trade declines by 2.6 trillion naira over FX shortage. That's according to the National Bureau of Statistics. And Nigeria Air reps grill federal government officials today. Okay, we'll find out what is really happening in that sector. Uh, we move from Punch to the Guardian. The Guardian newspaper is next. This one leads with the headline, Labor undeterred by court order 
TUC demands 200 naira or 200,000 naira minimum wage. You'll find that story on page 6. Then, how proposed NLC strike may affect presidential election petition? That's the news on page 6 of The Guardian. Johesu suspends strike for 21 days after parley with Tinubu. That means it's not a total suspension. It is just, you know, let's watch and see. 21 days after parley with, um, with Tinubu, that is the president. Universities and fledgling e-libraries. Okay, uh, we'll move now to the next headlines. Not the next newspaper now. Next headline. Smaller one. Nigeria's imports squeezed by cash scarcity fall by 25.8% year on year. Empty streets, short businesses, Great Mbaz sit at home ban in Enugu. Great Mbaz sit at home ban in Enugu. So Enugu has banned sit at home, yet there are empty streets and um, short businesses. Um, one year after, our Catholic Church remembers victims. Is it a year already? Wow, how time flies. IMF tax Nigeria on revenue generation, debt management. That is business page 15, if you are reading The Guardian. Okay, we move from The Guardian to the next newspaper. The next newspaper will be Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspaper. This leads with labor suspense strike. Riders are uh, TUC demands 200,000 Naira minimum wage. Federal government unions open room for more negotiations. Industrial action threat to peace, IGP. And Quara reduces work days to three. Um, traders count losses. Looting spreads as Kano government continues demolition. That's a smaller headline there. Amid subsidy removal, jet fuel, cooking gas prices crash. Court shops, or stops rather, EFCC, ICPC, DSS from detaining ex-governor Yari. Um, okay, that's, that'll be all we can take from, the, from Daily Trust. We'll move now to The Nation. The Nation will be our final newspaper for today. And it, the story there on, on top of the front page is Fraka as Ogun Tribunal begins sitting. Fraka as Ogun Tribunal begins sitting. Proceedings not affected. That's the rider. Don't board intelligence, don't hold intelligence, Tinubu directs security agencies. Jimo Ibrahim rates president's development plan high. Health workers call off strike conditionally. We also have a story about Igbo State, Uzodimma, APC governors supporting Abbas Kalu. And we have from the tribunal, Obi didn't win in Nasarawa, Atiku's witness tells court. LP, LP tenders results from eight more states. Okay. Um, then... Uh, Labor suspends strike action. We've taken that severally. Uh, talks between government, TUC, NLC on palliatives implementation for June 19. Okay, those are the headlines uh, we could take from all the newspapers that we have today. The Punch, The Guardian, The Daily Trust, and uh, The Nation newspaper. Okay, so to help us uh, look into... Uh, these headlines, uh, we're glad to announce that we have Mr. Chris Kainde Wandu, a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, joining us live this morning. Good morning and welcome to the show, Chris. Good morning, thanks for having me this morning. Okay, uh, before uh, we, we started behind the scene, uh, I was just teasing you that it's good that you are, are talking from home with us. You didn't have to enter the road this morning. Uh, but how has the um, the fuel subsidy removal uh, affected you as an individual before we go into the newspaper, uh, what the headlines are saying? Well, uh, it affects, it's affecting the way it affects the brother and I So um, I'm not in isolation in Nigeria. And, uh, 
here in Lagos. And um, I know that uh, in the past one week, it has been uh, very difficult for, for me to be able to get the PMS, as it were, uh, under the prevailing circumstances. Prices have shot up to about 300%. Then that is where we are. Why labor and government are dying and trying to see how to find a way out of it. But that is where we are. And um, so uh, we are all going through this, whether you're an APC, PDP, Labour Party, or whatever you call yourself, or any party you want to, uh, we are all in this together. So whatever policies that government put in place, it is going to affect each and every one of us, irrespective of our party, uh, leaning, and uh, even those of us that are apathetic. And it's the same thing, but it has not been a, a very, very a good experience in the past one. And I hope that labor and government reach a compromise and so that we can have a compromise on issues being raised and uh, other parties we come now. Okay. Uh, in the work as now. Yeah. We've started off by talking about this subsidy, so we're continuing with it. From all the um, network, oh, sorry, the newspapers, we find this story on subsidy. Uh, the court has ordered that NLC should not go on strike uh, for whatever reason that they gave. Uh, in some newspapers, they are saying that the, the NLC is not deterred by that order, and in others, they're saying NLC is kicking against that order. Uh, we do not know tomorrow is the day that is supposed to be the day for the strike, and we don't know how that would pan out. But this strike that the NRC is thinking about, whether it happens or not, what does it say uh, about our, our Nigerian uh, situation? Because it seems as if it's only strikes that we use to drive home our points. Are there alternative measures? Uh, you think that can be used instead of going on strike and crippling the small um, uh, economy that we have now? And that really comes in proper perspective. Um, yes, a court, the, the, the National Industrial Court, NIC, uh, gave a directive uh, yesterday that uh, NLC to use should be in back on strike. And um, then the determination of the suit far that the federal government and industrial courts. Um, but that has been overtaken by grant because the federal government, um, well, let's say the federal government, okay, there was a piece broken by the, the, the man that was to present the, the chief of staff to the president, and who is also um, the Speaker. Speaker of the House of Representatives, at least as of now, Mr. Femi Majabia Miller, he met with Labour yesterday, and uh, they agreed on suspended the strike, um, labor table is demands um, to the federal government, uh, which the federal government are to look into. Uh, the strike has been shaped now for now, and um, the, the meeting has been fixed for the 19th of June. June yeah. uh, There's about two weeks time when labor and government will meet again to look at some of the demands that have been made and that put forward to the federal government and how they'll be able to reach a compromise. So. Probably after the 19th, uh, that the labor will not come out with the position whether to, to uh, go on a strike or not. So that is where we are uh, presently. Uh, but let me also say this, most often than not, I think um, we have seen this coming. And even the labor itself is part of the problem. Uh, because let us put it in proper perspective. The, labor, the candidates of the three major political parties the, the presidential candidates of the three major political parties during their campaign, they made it say that they are going to remove first subsidy mm. once they take the vote. That of the APC who was elected, uh, Ashwani Bola made no move. That of the PDP, Atiko Abubaka. And Labour Party presidential candidate Peter will be. In fact, Peter will be saying that um, um, first subsidy is a fraud and that he was going to. Will be his to remove it if he's elected. So the Labour Party uh, presidential candidate have said that, and the Labour member for once during this period also um, pulled out um, statement uh, condemning the uh, statement of his case because he is, is the presidential candidate of this same Labour Party, um, this Labour uh, Labour Union NLC. So, uh, so they indirectly um, voted. 
uh, for the removal of subsidy indirectly uh, without knowing now that it was removed. But my only body challenge is not just the removal, but the way our manager was removed. Don't forget that we learned that subsidy had been paid to the end of June yeah. this year. And just on the 29th, when the president made that statement, automatically it was like it has been removed. Then he asked your question, what happened to the money that was paid for subsidy to June? Mm. Was it said it has been paid for? How come it was removed immediately? Then, I mean, it, it's very shady. And that is where we wanted to come out clear on this. But when the two elephant prices, the gas that suffers, is the other emergency that suffering transportation because of it, the roof, um, journeys of about 200 naira has moved to 800 to 1,000 naira. Interstate um, transportation has moved over 300 to 200%. And that is where we find ourselves. And I hope that um, it's much because whatever uh, affects the children affects every aspect of our economic life. But that is not a really challenge. The problem is that nobody is talking about the solution. All the former urban um, revinaries that we have in Nigeria, that over 11 trillion dollars have been posted, that have been uh, put into those refineries in the past 20 years, without it refining a single liter of fuel. Nobody is talking about that. The government have not told us how that will be revived, whether it will be privatized, or how we're going to fail, because irrespective of whatever you say, if we continue depending 100% of the production of fuel, then we will continue to have these challenges because it's the price of fuel will not be based on uh, market forces across the globe. People are saying that, oh, Dangote is here and start pumping the uh, fuel um, anytime from July and the rest of the year. Also, look at Dangote. That to me is a monopoly. That means that if Dangote sneezes, every one of us will cash code. And I think that then we should be able to find a solution. The solution to me is building refineries. If these ones are more abound, we'll we try to revive them and make sure that if the government doesn't want to be part of it, then we can privatize it to certain individuals who can be able to take it up. But definitely, removal of subsidy is something that is there to stay as far as I'm concerned because we're paying so much for subsidy and we cannot be able to sustain it uh, with the kind of economic present they have. Some people say even that uh, Dangote's refinery may start operation in 2024 and whatever was done there to commission it and all that does not give us the confidence that it's going to start really in July. I wonder what will happen if that really is going to be the case, that it will start production and distribution in 2024 by January. Well, we have all sorts. Um, we heard that it's going to be July, some say that it's August. Um, some say that it's about 70 percent, 75 percent ready. Whatever it is, um, the fact is that it has to hit the ground running. Um, now we are running into serious problem. And just seems to be the only country in the world where you uh, you, you sell crude oil and then buy a refined petroleum from uh, outside your shore, and that is why we're having this current problem. The landing costs and all the rest are going to make uh, uh, this petroleum product very very expensive. Now, let us not also um, uh, believe that with Dangote, the refinery of petroleum, that petroleum is going to be cheaper. No, it will not be fine. It might be a bit cheaper than what we have presently, but it will still be expensive because the market forces uh, is going to also determine how much Dangote is going to sell his, uh, his petroleum. Don't forget what is happening in cement. In cement, don't forget what is happening with sugar and all the rest that where Dangote was the monopoly. But good news coming in is also that Ora uh, uh, another multi-billion naira company, is looking at establishing another 200,000 um, barrel per day or 200,000 200, uh, 200, uh, per liter a day um, in somewhere in a quiet state. states. So we're looking at, uh, with that good, I think that good is about 650,000 or so per day. Uh, we're looking at... Um, if we will be able to uh, meet up with that, I know that it will take some time. It's going to take some years. But we're going to get the BUA uh, establishing its own refinery in Akwai Bond, and we have that of Dangote. If we add about two or three other refineries, either by individuals or, or by the government, then we'll be able to have some level of stability. But some have said that the reason why, uh, don't forget that licenses were given out to, to some companies yet back to be able to establish their refineries. Uh, modular refineries, as it's called, but most of them they, they, those didn't come because they said that there's no proper pricing and it was not going to be profitable for them. Probably with the removal of subsidy now, most other investors will want to come into the sector, and um, but it will take us some time for it to stabilize. 
Okay, well, uh, at least on the on the bright side, amidst subsidy removal, jet fuel, cooking gas prices have crashed. That's according to a story that we find in Daily Trust. So, will that help Nigerians more? What are your comments? Well, it is true. I would agree. Somebody was telling me yesterday that um, a 12.5 kg, which is the normal cylinder for gas, has dropped as much as um, to about 7,000 or thereabout from what it used to be, I think 9,800 or so. Um, that I've not verified. Um, somebody said that, yes. So, uh, my wife, I've not, we've not, we've not referred, uh, so maybe until I get to the free station and see mm. about it. But if that is the case, then you ask yourself, where is that coming from? Mm. Um, if evasion, um, fuel prices have dropped as well. That I've not, I just knew it from a um, few days ago, about two days ago. Um, the, um, uh, um, the flight ticket is still as high as anything, anything you can get. So, uh, if this happened in the last 24 hours, has been speculated, let us wait and see whether it's going to be a one off or it's going to be a continuous thing. I don't know where the drop is coming from, whether it's by the fiscal policies or economic policies. This government is just barely uh, one week in, in office, so I wouldn't have seen any effect on that. But if, um, if that is what it is, then uh, we see how it pans out. But for me, um, the basic thing is that the government, while removing subsidy, have not told us the palliative that average Nigerians are talking about uh, transport, this and that. TUC came out yesterday to tell the government to increase the minimum wage to 200,000 naira uh, mm -hmm. every month. My brother, 30,000 naira was agreed some years back. Till now, most states cannot pay 30,000 naira. So, where are they going to get? 200,000 naira minimum wage to be Nigerians. <laughs> well, uh, that's how it goes. And whether government is going to accede to that. Okay, but the question we've also been asking is, if minimum wage, oh, sorry, the subsidy is removed, that means that money is going to be put in something else. So that money that was supposed to be voted for, uh, for the fuel subsidy that was not voted anymore, where did it go to? Does it not worry you? It does. And that is great. That is what we talk about um, corruption within the system. Don't forget, a um, few years ago, when the, the federal government made the initial increase in the point price, we were told, oh, uh, the money uh, made from the, from the um, increase is going to be challenged into education, it's going to be challenged into roads, it's going to be challenged into infrastructure. Did you see any? Did you see that? Did that happen? Did it have to go on strike for one year? Um, our, is, do we have our road? Are they better? Is the education system better? They also just went on strike and they just called out that is the, that is the, um, uh, that's the medical sector. Is there an improvement? So all these are the, the issues that we talk about. So governments, there's a trust discipline, uh, deficit between the government and the people. And the fact remains is that the people no longer trust government. And that is why we're having all this kind of problem because um, if you promise, uh, if you make promises to your people, and then the people in their own part fulfill their own part of the bargain, and you are not fulfilling well, your own part, that becomes an issue. So that trust deficit has always been the challenge and has been the problem. And that's why also in Nigeria you see that most people don't pay taxes. Because if you look at the um, advanced countries or whatever, the first world or second world or whatever we call it, you see that people pay taxes. And why they pay taxes? Because they trust that the whatever they pay, government is going to use it. That is why you find electricity, 24 hours, that is five good roads, that is why you find medicals, that is how uh, you find um, insurance policies that can be able to take care of you. That is why in the education sector, you can see that in some cases, like in the United Kingdom, primary school students don't pay school fees from primary one to whatever, six or thereabouts. So, um, so they are willing to pay taxes. They're here. The little you pay, nothing. Government have nothing to show for it, and because of that uh, 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 trust deficit, people are very skeptical in believing whatever government say. Well, let's wait and see whether the government of government uh, is going to be a, 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 bring something different to the mix. But until we remove that trust deficit between the government and the, uh, and the people, we will always have these serious challenges. Okay, uh, let's uh, move to the National Assembly as well. There's this struggle for the leadership of the National Assembly. 
one of the contestants for the seat of the Senate president is the ex-governor Yari. Right now, we just have a story on Daily Trust that the court has stopped EFCC, ICPC, and DSS from detaining ex-governor Yari. So, what does it say about the courts, according to uh, your, from your own perspective? Well, um, first and foremost, we have to establish that every Nigerian has the right to aspire for the highest any office in Nigeria, irrespective of religion uh, or, uh, or tribe. We have the right. If I, I, I'm from Imo State, I'm from Ubo, if I decide to be the president of Nigeria, then I, I have the fundamental right, as well as the strength in the 1999 constitution as amended to aspire to any office in the land. Once I have, I meet the criteria. So anybody aspiring to the office of the president of the Senate has the right to do that. Yeah. But but you you just, you just say once you meet the criteria, um, if you have yes. problems that uh, are with the EFCC, for instance, you have cases, and in some cases, one of the persons also contesting for the Senate presidency actually went to jail, came out, not because the charges were dropped, but because of technicalities. And he's roaming free. He's in the Senate. He's trying to be the, the Senate president. Now, another person with a, a huge court case uh, has been told by the court to say, uh, to stop, uh, uh, has been told, or EFCC has been told, or the prosecuting agencies have been told to hands off and not detain him. What if he is supposed to be detained? Why will he? Is that not just cuddling the progress of our nation, uh, just going to get court orders all the time? Because it happens. You stall the, no. the, these proceedings no, until that, that the time goes. Uh, yes. It's, you are talking between morality and law. I'm a law graduate. And law says that except you are convicted, except you are convicted, if you are not convicted, all is just within the realms of allegations, you still you are you are as free as Dido. So except you are convicted until they are convicted. We are talking of the uh, former um, uh, governor of Abia State uh, that was um, convicted and was kept in prison. That is Oji Kalu, uh, Oji Zokalu. But it's the same court that released him. So as far as the concerned. EFCC was supposed to start the case all over again, and it now, the FCC did not do anything. So, is it the fault of the man? It is the system. So, but, as I was saying, um, if all these are within the realms of allegations, if anybody has anything against they take it to the court. Until that court pronounce a conviction on anybody, mere investigation does not stop you from aspiring to any of this. The 1999 Constitution was abundantly clear, made it clear on the criteria to buy for office of the president, the vice president, governor, deputy governor, member of national assembly, and state houses of assembly. That is very, very clear. So if you're able to meet that requirement. But what I'm heading to is that morality is between morality and law. The fact remains that because what people are saying, what most Nigerians are saying, that because the APDP, APC government uh, was able to get away with a Muslim Muslim ticket, there is the need for a balance. That is why. Uh, there's this push for a sadhana of Christian background to become the Senate president. And I think that is why the APC has pitched its intent with the former governor of Hawaii Bomb State, um, Goswin Akbabio. And um, but other people, other uh, senators also have the right to be able to come. That is, uh, that is the APC for you. But it does not preclude any other person from contesting. And if possible, if the those in the opposition were able to muster enough. Uh, Votes. You'd be shocked, you'd be surprised that on that day that it might just be someone else that um, they might be. You saw what happened in 2015 with uh, Kola Saraki, where APC pitch stands with the current president of the Senate then, and then um, Ahmed Lawan. And before they knew it, um, the opposition had gathered uh, enough um, uh, votes with some members of the ruling party, and Kola Saraki was uh, the stone. Nothing is cast on stone, but we had that. The president will be meeting uh, with um, opposition party members of the National Assembly on Monday. I don't know whether to arrive at a compromise or not. But for now, it is a straight fight between Yari, Ojis of Kalu, as well as uh, uh, goes with Akwabi in the Senate. Where the main problem is not even the Senate, it's in the House of Representatives. Where a consensus has not been reached. Where the people of the North Central felt that they've been shortchanged um, by this current government, uh, that, that they believe that they have a right to the speakership of the national of the House of Representatives, and I, I totally agree with them too. Um, so, but uh, you also ask yourself: 
as the government uh, give a, 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 a stroke, a quick stroke with the appointment of um, go, uh, uh, former Senator Akume, Senator Akume, as the secretary to the government of federation. He's from North Central. A lot of people have been saying, probably that was done to assuage the people of the North Central. Whether that will fly or not is just to be seen. They, on Tuesday next week, a newspaper and uh, for the House of Representatives and also the Senate President. Okay, let me let me take this final one. Um, uh, Enugu State Governor um, Mba said that um, uh, he has banned the seed at home in his state. But right now we have this story on the Guardian saying empty streets, shut businesses, Greek Mba's seed at home ban in Enugu, which means people are still not confident that that ban is good enough. What is really happening to the governors in the southeast? Have they lost power, or what is the reason why the people fear the breakaway factions uh, more than the constituted authority, which is the government? Well, I, when that when the uh, governor made that speech, I just knew that it was mere rhetoric because you don't have the capacity to, be able to do what you do, and which is the protection of the lives and properties of people. When you say they should move out, what have you put in place in terms of security people to secure the lives and property of your citizens? If you have not done that, then what they're just making is just a mere statement. And the fact that it's not that the people are not ready to go out, the fact remains is that if they do, what will happen to their lives and properties? Some of them in the past have ventured out and they were killed in their tents, and the government have not been able to do anything about it. So it is just the fear of the unknown that is what is happening in South or until we have the political will and the ability to be able to provide this with enough security to be able to take care of some of these um, challenges that they are facing. Then this, the issue of uh, uh, Sitato will continue. Uh, it has, the Southeast uh, as a region have lost billions and billions of naira on this weekly ritual, which to me, I, I, I totally believe that uh, it should be caused off and something should be done about it. Yes, the people are helpless. Um, they don't have the means to be able to defend themselves. I said they say that they should resort to carry arms. They carry arms with the same police that will arrest them. I thought that by now the Southeast would have find a solution. It's where the government of the Southeast will find a solution to this problem, just as the people of the Southwest did with the uh, establishment of our multi um, the, the security outfit, which has brought some kind of sanity to the South, Southwest. And that is why we have enjoyed relative peace in the Southwest. Ubuntu was supposed to be their own passion of Amotepu. But the governors of the South is either selfishly or for whatever reasons have decided not to be able to move in that direction. The one that established the world, the one in the Boy State by the former Boy State governor decided to use it as a way of optimizing political opponents. And that is why that has been also So that is what it is for now. Until the governors of the South has come together, put heads together, and say that enough is enough, and be able to channel their resources and energy towards providing an alternative, uh, like a security outfit that can complement the work of the police, army, uh, the civil defense, and other security agencies, then you continue to have this uh, daily, uh, weekly boycott of uh, sitting at home, as it were. Um, I probably have come to say that they are, they are not the ones asking for this boycott uh, sit at home. But the fact is that why is it that security agencies have not been able to penetrate the camp of these um, individuals that have decided to take the laws into their hands by killing their fellow um, citizens? I know that the DSS, the army, and the police have the capacity to be able to penetrate and bring those uh, that are perpetrating this act of killing in the South. Why they have not been able to achieve a, a, any kind of sensible result is what I thought. Okay, well, I just wonder uh, why the southeastern governors or southeast governors are they seem not to be united. I wonder what the challenge is because that's a group that everybody expects that should be even more united than any other uh, group in Nigeria, uh, having you know maybe suffered. Uh, the way they have uh, from the civil war to this point, it should have given them the kind of uh, um, orientation that would make them stick together as brothers. Why all this fight all the time? Do you have an insight to why they always seem to be so far apart from each other instead of uniting? I'm from, I'm from Southeast, mm -hmm. and um, this 
affect me. I think it's um, one is selfishness on the part of uh, the uh, governors and leaders of the southeast. Uh, why is the selfishness is that if you don't have a, a sense of purpose and uh, you don't have the, the, the magnanimity to be able to do the right thing, then this is what happens. Um, there must be some kind of synergy uh, between these governors, uh, as it were, and until they're able to come together as a force, irrespective of their political lead, then they will continue to find themselves where they are. And that is the issue as it were. Whether you are APC, ABDA, or PDP, you see so that you are in governance and it's for the good of your people. So, they, that unity between the governors of the Southwest. In the Southwest, you see governors of various um, different political parties coming together. As you see what Martin, when there is a Southwest um, meeting, a Southwest governors meeting, you see Martin Day is there, it's of PDP, you see those of the um, APC, everybody coming together for the common good of all. But selfishness on the part of the government, uh, governors of the South has not made it much easier for them to be able to come together. So, and I, I think they are able to eschew that bitterness and see themselves as working for the good of their people, the better for it. If there's no unity when the head, when the house is divided uh, uh, upon itself, then the center can all go as soon as they say this book, things fall apart. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Chris, for your time this morning, uh, for helping us understand some of these headlines. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I have a wonderful day. Yeah. Okay, we've been talking with Chris Kainde Wandu, uh, who is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He was talking to us from here in Nigeria. We'll take a break when we return. We will be looking at our first hot topic. Stay with us.